First, I want to say a few things to today's excellent event. This event is part of the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council. And this is a, a council that celebrates 10 years, 10 years of working together to try and improve the economic situation for women in Pakistan. We are celebrating 10 years of the U.S.-Pakistan Women's Council, the same year that we are celebrating 75 years of U.S.-Pakistan diplomatic relations. And I think this council is an excellent example of what the U.S. and Pakistan can do together to improve the role of women in society and to improve the Pakistani economy. The report and the initiative that you see behind me, the Pakistan Future of Women and in Work Initiative, is just one of the things that the council is doing together with the U.S. Embassy, the State Department, Texas A&M, some of our corporate sponsors, including S&P Global. Um, it is one of many things that we do. I want to highlight another project that we have, which is the Pakistan Million Women Mentors Initiative, which is something where corporations are pledging to mentor up to a million Pakistani women. I hope that some of the corporations that are not participating yet hear this or see this report and think this is something that we could do to help support women. We also have the Women's Business Opportunity Initiative. It's an effort uh, through council member We Connect International to build inclusive value chains to help women produced goods get into the value chains and improve the economy. And then lastly, another initiative is the Future of Women in Energy Scholars Program along with Texas A&M. These are a few examples of what we're trying to do to boost the Pakistani economy, to help bring women in, and to help the economy grow. Excellency, as you have Excellency? Excellency, as one, Excellency, as this host was saying, that they have, uh, you all of you have uh, visited the flood affected areas and you have seen the plight of the women. So what, okay. what's the initiative of US Embassy uh, regarding that and to make their lives better? Thanks. Um, you know, one of the purposes of this uh, program that we uh, announced today, that we unveiled today, um, was to show how women are disproportionately affected by uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, which we've all been living through for the last couple of years. Um, uh, what we've seen with this uh, incredibly uh, tragic flooding event um, is some of the same phenomenon. In other words, that women and girls and, and children in general are the, are the most deeply affected by it. Um, and we have to look for ways to mitigate that. So um, I think what we're doing, and, and we've uh, you know, recently announced uh, a, a substantial uh, aid contribution to Pakistan, and we're gonna be looking for further ways in which we can assist, um, and, and also looking for ways that we can make sure that that assistance is distributed in a way that gets to the people that really need it. And in many cases, that is going to be uh, women and girls. Excellency, as you have I think we're seeing around the world um, the effects of climate change in these uh, in extreme weather events, um, and it's really going to be a shared challenge for for the entire globe to deal with. Uh, the Biden administration is uh, absolutely stepping forward to do that, and we re recently announced uh, uh, a new initiative that includes three billion dollars for climate adaptation for for trying to build climate resilient uh, infrastructure and societies. Um, and again, we're going to look for ways that we can help Pakistan both um, plan for um, and develop the kind of resilient infrastructure that uh, Pakistan will need to, to deal with these problems, which are going to keep recurring in the future. Okay. Um, as it's getting a little hot, um, let's go for uh, one more Talib. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. I just want to ask you, as you mentioned, the 15,000 uh, trainings and the 10,000 jobs for Pakistan uh, women's housing mentioned. I just want to ask you, what are these sectors and what are the kind of these uh, things that have been mentioned for you? 
So um, uh, one of the fundamental areas of training that we've tried to do is to help them build general job skills, the kind of, the kind of skills you need to, um, uh, to be a leader in, in a workplace, um, to make yourself competitive uh, for, uh, uh, for, for almost any job. So there's a, a general uh, level of training. We also contribute to programs that give uh, specific sorts of uh, job training, but mostly these are trying to develop those those kind of uh, soft skills that um, uh, allow you to compete and actually grow in in, in your career and your work and make the uh, and make um, uh, people realize uh, what an important contribution women uh, must be making to Pakistan. Again, it's uh, um, uh, for for Pakistan, which has such a um, uh, such a big gap in the gender, uh, in gender, in the workforce, um, it's a huge economic disadvantage. In other words, uh, Pakistan uh, as a country is suffering from, uh, uh, the whole country is suffering from this. Um, and it's probably the biggest untapped resource that Pakistan has right now is the lack of women participating in the workforce. Thank you. So I appreciate the incredible interest that we have here, and I encourage everyone to read this report, which really focuses on the effects that COVID has had on women, particularly on mental health and the burden on caregivers. And I think it's an important part of how we're considering a, a, a response to COVID and how we move forward in reshaping the workforce. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.